Peace TV reporters have been active at the UN headquarters since 2010, the age of former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. They are often invited to gather pictures and news about high-level meetings and events at the UN headquarters. Our news reports have, in part, kept the international community up to date with the work of different governments so that people everywhere will know the great efforts and contributions of the UN to world peace, international affairs, and multilateralism. Uh, I will be today's moderator, and uh, I'm mostly uh, tech a uh, person who's had her entire career in New York, despite the very British accent. Uh, I am from England, France, and Turkey, have landed here 13 years ago, and have become American this year. Uh, and I was a former chief of staff at Techstars, the largest pre-seed investor uh, in startups in the world, uh, along with Y Combinator, which we will mention. We are really pleased to partner uh, with such a diverse group of people and innovators today uh, across such a broad spectrum of fields uh, related to giving. Uh, so as we always look at in tech, we are always building strong and uh, high powered growth companies, but we always remember where we come from because a startup is only one person at the beginning and just an idea. And so giving back is as important to the tech world as well as to the rest of you. Um, so I don't know if any of you know what Bunchful means. I know that I had to kind of look it up when I was preparing for this wonderful event. So I'm just curious um, in the audience here, anyone wants to take a quick guess? I'll put you guys on the spot. The easiest thing to do is to say, I'm so sorry, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what this new journey means, or I'm afraid of what may or may not happen. And we let that fear conquer us. But today is a testament to being able to overcome that fear and face all the things that have brought us, that are part of our own journey and self-development. Today is not really about me. I really created today to be a celebration of you, a celebration of the work that you are doing, the way, all the ways that you are giving back, all the work that you do to help and empower others. So again, I want to say thank you. Thank you for the work that has brought you here today. Now, as I look out at the audience, I realize many of our members, audience members have not yet shown up. So we hope that you know they will be trickling in. But regardless, we are, memor we are memorializing today to live as a testament to the work and all the challenges that we may face as we move forward, but that we will also overcome. I want to say thank you as well. I want to say thank you to Jessica, Jeff Jessica Sophia Wong. I want to say thank you to our team, LeVar, Jordan, all the team in the background who have, uh, who have helped us uh, get here today. And I want to say thank you to our audience. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure that the work that you do here today and afterwards shine very brightly and uh, across many platforms. So <laughs> without... Uh, We'll talk a little bit more about uh, about um, in my you know the reason I founded Bunchful. But Crystal asked the question before: What does Bunchful mean? Well, I coined the term Bunchful to mean sharing your wealth and your abundance with others, and that's what it means to be Bunchful. So, if you have not yet seen the term in the dictionary or on Google, training which takes five minutes, which is a training program that we have at LifeWorks, and you go to any doctor of your choice, like the ophthalmologist or the dentist, that's a total of $250. If you buy a pair of sneakers, an Apple Watch, or a Fitbit, that's $100. If you also go and get a full body massage, you go to a gym and you work out, that is a total of $175. So while you're working out and being an employee with us, we promote good health and wellness. 
And you can also give $525. Also, another thing is, if you wear glasses, we have an eyewear reimbursement where you can get $50. So we promote that all of our employees while you're working with us, that you go to the doctor, you get your annual physical, and we also train you on a lot of healthy ways to keep your life going as an employee. And at LifeWorks, I'm so proud to represent our company as, as a whole and make sure that all people get your annual checkups and your physicals on an annual basis and keep your health going. We want you to be here and health, health is wealth. And, um, and then I started, I was started as a science teacher. Do I have a way to click that forward? Oh, okay. So, uh, and then after 20 years of public education, somebody gave me a copy of the Read Aloud Handbook. I never heard of it. I never heard of the Read Aloud Handbook. And it basically says, and this is one of Penguin's top 100 books they've ever published. This is in the eighth edition. When I got involved, it was in the fourth edition. It basically says if you read a chapter of a novel, particularly a children's chapter novel, to elementary children, what you're doing is you're giving them a foundation of language and stories that will be a foundation for the rest of their education, the rest of their lives. So, so we found out upstream, this is the best technique, reading chapter books to children. There's no shortcut. You have to take that time to read to them. And then when you read it aloud to them, you would actually invest in them. You invested in them. So I got a hold of this and I formed a nonprofit. And then I formed a national nonprofit called Read to Them. And we came up with the idea that we would give all the children in, a, in an elementary school, all of them, a copy, like 600 copies of this book. They would go home and we would uh, have somebody read it aloud the first chapter to them. And then that this would be their book. We'd give it to them title this and give it to them. So they would read the first chapter and then when they get to school the next day, they have a trivia question and activities. This goes on for the whole month. Children love it. There are no book reports. There are no... It's just fun for families. It creates a sense of wellness in the family. I think I'm not going to sit at the podium. I'm too excited for that. So am I loud enough? Yes. yes. Excellent. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I've had the pleasure um, and almost honor of uh, knowing Raquel for many, many years. And I will always say she is tenacious and absolutely amazing, and I know she's only going to continue pro to progress from here as she continues to grow wonderful. So I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited to all of you are here, and I'm excited to be here. My name is Stephen Robert. I'm the CEO of Bedrock Credit America, and since 2007, we've been helping people understand financial literacy, specifically in the world of credit education. There's so much misinformation out there, and misguided information that you can find through these websites. Our goal and our mission is to allow people to understand completely and truly how credit really works. Because let's be honest, what is our credit report? For those academics in the room, our credit report is our grown-up report card, right? How am I doing financially? How am I handling my debts, the, the, the payment history, right? What is it all about? Well, our goal is to go out there and explain to people how credit works because there's just not enough of that. And the reason that's so important is because if it's, this isn't a situation of, I just don't understand it, but it's not gonna impact me. Unfortunately, I can tell you story after story after story where people had misinformation and it absolutely destroyed their home, their, their, their wishes and their, and their thoughts of going in a home. I'll give you an example. I had this happen a couple months ago. I had a client who called me and was um, somewhat perturbed and um, not really understanding what the process was, but the bottom line was she went to a free website she pulled her credit, and it turned out she had a 702 score in which she thought she would be good enough to be able to qualify. Well, then when she went into the bank and spoke with the bank, it turns out she really had a 645. Now, for those of you who might not be in the financial industry or in the mortgage industry, that is a drastic difference. Pursuit, right? This is something that we should all pursue. We should pursue uh, food security for everyone. We should pursue uh, housing for everyone. 
we can all work on this together. And so these 17 goals are what we have taken on at Bunchbowl as a mandate to ourselves. So when I founded uh, Bunchbowl, I founded this organization as a means to really highlight those who give back. I don't know if some of you have heard or read my story, but when it started, I didn't know it started. All I knew, picture this, I am, picture this, you're five or four, five or six years old, and every morning your grandmother's waking you up at 5 a.m., 5 a.m. because she has to go to the farm, and so all breakfast items have to be done. So I am so grateful to be able to share a little bit of what is um, a very passionate area for me. As she said, I'm Dr. Gail Brown, and I pastor a church along with my husband, uh, Bishop Randy Brown, and we've been married 45 years, and we have done 45 years of ministry in Africa and all over the world, China, all over the Caribbean, and I am so grateful to God for all of that. But I will tell you my story just for a hot second. In 1985, in 1985, one day when I was just home, just kind of doing housework, I wasn't doing church work, housework, and I remember a scripture in John that came to me. And the scripture came to me out of John the Bible, in John chapter 4. And there's a story there about a woman that was at a well. And this woman was very broken. This woman was very hurt. This woman had experienced rejection at all levels. Ish. And then, Lord, I'm still young. <laughs> Allow me to present myself. In just a few words, I'm Teresumo Monte. I'm the for the permanent representative of Cameroon to the United Nations. I'm a member of the African Leader Association Network. I'm the former president of the African Ambassador's Power Group. I'm the former uh, president of the International uh, United Nations International Bazaar. Yes. I'm president, I'm all president of the International Women Group called Wendy WC. I'm the former chair of the International Charity Bazaar, president of the United Nations African Borders Association, UNAMA. Because everything is in my house. Every gift that she's going to give to every woman at the conference is inside my house. And sometimes she had a conference one time, over 700 women. You know what was in my house? 700 wrapped gifts. Hallelujah. But we thank God. It's a good blessing. She's a wonderful woman. My wife and myself have been doing work together since 1978. We got married in 78 and immediately relocated to East Africa, Kenya in 1978, doing the work of God. We've been planting churches, setting up mission bases. We've built a Bible college in Zimbabwe. We've drilled wells. We've empowered the people, pushed the churches forward. In 1985, we actually started a base in Long Island, New York, in a little town called Wine Dash. And we're out there, we've got a church going on out there. That church has released great leaders across the globe. We have over 100 pastors that have churches under us across the United States of America. Then we have over a thousand pastors with churches in different regions of the world and Africa. We have this in a catastrophic geopolitical situation since COVID and it is a war that we did not forest. And war crimes did despair, suffering, misery, and social direct since COVID revolution from company to help support action to reduce social and vice poverty and misery in the world to fall by 20 person to the same person, we must commit ourselves to support people in the situation of exclusion and poverty and to engage with them to fighting poverty. I have read 
many books, but the old war continues to resonate in my head. The old war declared on days we where people are condemned to live in poverty. Women rights are violated, relating to enforce them is a sacred duty. This is a, the speak from Joseph Wresiski, who worked to build an international day for the eradication of the poverty in the UN. In 1992, the United Nations officialism recognized October 18 as the international day to fighting poverty. Thank you for the introduction. It's a privilege to be here to discuss how philanthropy and impact investing work together to address the sustainable development goals. Um, so from an investor's perspective, I'd like to talk about what it means to invest sustainably. And to do that, I would like to look at the what, the how, and the why of impact investing. So starting with the what, uh, when selecting what projects to invest in, um, one of the most effective ways to target the highest impact projects is to use a bottoms up rather than a top down approach. This means giving communities the opportunity to originate ideas and appreciate the importance of locally driven solutions and to an extent even letting the investee dictate where the investor focuses their attention. Uh, for example, um, as was mentioned, I spent the last six and a half years at the CEO Invest, where we provide patient capital loans and technical assistance to church-run enterprises um, across agriculture, healthcare, education, and financial inclusion in Sub-Saharan Africa. And when we first started in 2017, we were focused uh, strictly on investing in farms with the idea of improving food security across the continent. Uh, both in the first three to four years, we realized that these farms were co-located with schools. So the impact is truly real. Please help me welcome Mr. Joseph. So let's see, so far we've had a bishop, a basketball star, several business leaders, the first lady of Cameroon, a multi-hyphenate, globally renowned expert. Talk about imposter syndrome. Like, I'm now here talking to you about, uh, well, let's talk. Um, do what you can with what you have where you are. That is a quote from Teddy Roosevelt's serialized autobiography from more than a hundred years ago. And I think today it hits us with the same resonance, the same meaning, and the same admonishment as it did then. The title of his serialized autobiography, The Outlook. It's pretty apropos, right? Do what you can with what you have, where you are. Today as we gather to discuss the future of philanthropy, specifically as we reflect on ways to excite and evolve and extend the real impact that the UN SDGs can have globally, I want to offer you my own outlook about this book, The Gift of Technology. Now, before I go there, I'm going to tell you a short, true story and, imagine, and ask you to imagine a slightly different ending. I, uh, I don't know how many of you have ever heard of Ramanujan. Anyone? Ramanujan is? So, Ramanujan. Thank 
bold and let's head out to make the world a better place. Let's give a round of applause. And 
I thought, okay, with those jeans, this is my time. What I ended up having was a tumor in my pituitary gland that combined with a condition on my thyroid and an immune condition called Sjogren's. All this together would, in the long run, attack my bones and my glands with a lot of other discomforts. But they still could not diagnose all that at the same time. And I thought, OK, let's go see what this treatment is. And back then, it involved a lot of hormones that I was very afraid of taking with all this family history of cancer. And they told me that the other problems would come with years. Right now, it would affect mostly. From the Israeli camp, who are going to help and join me in presenting some of our awards today? More on that later. Thank you. Awards are struggling because of the pay rate is so low. And uh, with 0.009% per stream, it, which is below a penny, you know, it's difficult for them to make a living off of their craft work. And the only way that they can do it is, is basically through live performances. You know, it used to be, uh, once upon a time, artists were able to make up a substantial amount of royalties and payments because we had photograph records and we had CDs. And although we embraced the, the technology, Thank you. 